to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, and if indeed we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. The word of the Lord. And the 
all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We are now in August, and throughout the Orthodox world, Orthodox Christians now are uh, observing the Dormition Fast in preparation for the Dormition on the 15th of August. We have uh, this week the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration, and we come at a particular time in which there is the commemoration of uh, St. Stephen, the first martyr of the church, the proto-martyr, one of the first deacons. Very specifically, the, the translation of his relics are commemorated throughout the Orthodox world today. And also one of the uh, popes of Rome, one of the Orthodox bishops of Rome, Stephen, is commemorated. When we look at the epistle today, we have a, again, a very basic presentation of some of the foundational truths of the spiritual life. We see this in St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. This is a very basic way of understanding the spiritual life. If we look at the ancient uh, Didache, it, the, there is the way of life and there is the way of death. That's the simplest way to put it. That we follow the way of life and do those things that Christ has taught us to do in harmony with the way of the Spirit. Or we do the opposite. We go the way of self-will. We go the way of the world. The world, sometimes, in the Scripture, means not the created world, but the world that is fallen, that is full of death, and that is in rebellion to God. And if we live according to the flesh, then we will die. The according to the flesh means the same thing as the way of death. If the flesh that we have is often influenced by the passions. And some of those passions are really closely connected to the flesh. For example, like lust and gluttony. Very easily we can see. And, and laziness. They're very uh, much connected to the body. But the pa other passions also are connected to the body in that we know that if we get angry, we feel it. Right? If we feel uh, other emotions, we feel it in our body. But if we follow those things uh, based on how we feel with our bodies, how it affects our body, or we listen to our bodies rather than listening to God and what the body wants us to do, then we will follow the way of death. That leads to spiritual death. It leads to spiritual slavery. And it's like putting ourselves into debt or into slavery. Uh, and it's hard to crawl out of that. It's hard to free ourselves from that the more and more we do it. But the opposite is to live according to the spirit. To put the death, the, the deeds of the body, that's the, the evil of the body, so that we may live. As many as you are led by the Spirit of God, as, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So, if we follow 
the Spirit. We do what Christ has taught us to do. Not the inclinations of the body or of the flesh. We can think of flesh as being generally our sort of state of death that we live in. If we begin to repent from evil and we follow God and we get on that way of life, then we are living really as the children of God. Children who are reflecting uh, the Father. Children often reflect their parents in many ways. Sometimes they reflect good things, sometimes not. But we want to reflect the good of the Father for our sake and for the sake of others who see it. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So we are not to live in this way of slavery. When we live in the way of slavery, then we are often full of not only fear, but it can lead to depression and anxiety and all kinds of problems in our minds and problems in our bodies. It's that we're all connected, we're psychosomatic. Because what we're doing is really unnatural for the human person. We live in a way that sometimes that feels natural. Like we think this is who I am because this is what my body is telling me, this is what my opinions are telling me. But what we've fallen into is self-will and self-delusion. We follow the Spirit, we're following the one who created us, who knows us more than we know ourselves. And then we're able to free ourselves from this bondage. We really very easily in, enslave ourselves. People often, uh, in our day, worry about persecution and about what the authorities can do to us. But we have enough to worry about worrying about what we do to ourselves. We sell ourselves in to bondage by our own opinion, by how we choose to spend our time, by what we choose to think about, by what we choose to do. We get on our own hamster wheels and, and just keep going and going and going. And that is uh, worse than what anybody else can do to us. If we have the right disposition and we follow the Spirit, we see in the Scripture even if the authorities do imprison us, we can still be free. As it said, you can take someone that, that, that has peace in their hearts. You put them in the worst situation, they'll be at peace. Right? But you take somebody that does not have peace in the heart, you can put them on the beach in the Bahamas and they're going to have problems. Right? They're, they're never going to find happiness because the problem is in the heart. It's not. There's always something to complain about. But if we have... Christ and we follow the way, if we're able to shed those things that are pertain to the sinful part of ourselves, turning away from that sin, that's the fleshly part of ourselves, then we have freedom. And we cry out, Abba Father, a term of endearment to God uh, as, as our Father, the one who loves us, the one whom we love. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children and heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Right? The, the firstborn. He's called the firstborn, not because there were others born of Mary, because he was the only born of Mary, but the firstborn is the one who inherited all things. Right? And we become co-heirs with Christ by sharing in His grace. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Notice this connection here, this, this way of of the Spirit. You know, we turn away the flesh, we turn away from our sin, we follow the Spirit, and what does it tell us? That the Spirit will bear witness that we are children of God. But it doesn't say if you follow the way of the Spirit, you will not suffer. But that suffering is not for nothing. Right? We suffer because of what the world will put upon us. We will suffer from what the demons may put upon us. We may suffer from what those who do not know God put upon us. We may suffer from what the brokenness of the world, like sickness, uh, when it comes upon us. We may suffer from these things. It doesn't say we're going to be safe from those things, safe from suffering. But through Christ, suffering is transformed.
to be glorified with Christ. Christ himself suffered. I mean, the way of Christ is the way of the cross. And we live even the way of self-crucifixion, crucifying our sin. But the difference is that we, what we endure in this world, we endure it for our salvation. You can be crushed by the world and the suffering of the world and the difficulty of the world. And it can put you deeper and deeper in the pit. Or you can receive those things with humility and be refined by it like the fire of God. And your impurities will be burned away. And you have more patience. And you have more love. And you have more compassion. If we have the right disposition in the heart, and we want to follow God with all of our might, then it transforms our lives for the better. If we don't want to follow God and we want to live according to the flesh, then our lives will be changed, but not for the better. We want to get rid of the fleshliness. This is not getting rid of the bodyliness of ourselves. Like there's a difference. Flesh sometimes is used to mean the sinfulness. But the body uh, is not the same thing. Like we are embodied souls. And in fact, when we resurrect, it is a spiritual body. So it's not that the body is evil. That's not what it's talking about. That's not fleshliness, the evil of the body. It's the question is this, is that do we follow the inclinations of the body? Does the, does the soul follow the body that is affected by this fallen world? Or do we purify our soul and does the body follow the soul? So that we have harmony, spiritual harmony. And that is very much is what fasting is about during these fasting periods. Our body may tell us we want cheesecake. But our soul can tell our body, you're not going to have it. And we don't have to eat it. Right? Everybody wants a burger. But you don't have to have it when during a fast. And we learn that if we can do this with simple things, like, uh, like, uh, like cheese, which is apparently my theme today. If we can do it with cheese, then we can do it with sin. If I can tell my body, you're not going to eat this, I can tell my soul, you know, you're not going, I can tell my body, my soul can tell my body, you're not going to say this with your lips. Right? If I start having a thought, I can tell my mind, you're, you're not going to hold on to that thought. Right? If I start feeling certain things, I can tell my body, you need to calm down. Right? We are to put all things in proper order. And if we purify our heart within us through our prayer and our repentance, then we gain mastery over the soul. And if we gain mastery over the, the soul, then we gain mastery over the body. Because we have to live in this life with both. We are soul and body. We are embodied souls. A whole human being. And what we hear in the epistle today is just the very basic truth we are over and over that if we live a life of love and of humility and of prayer and of real faith in God and we follow His way that that will take us where we want to go sharing in the riches of God being clothed in the grace of God having that grace within us shining through us as we remember at the transfiguration and we will avoid the opposite which is the way of death the way of sickness and the soul and the way of destruction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.